Good morning to everybody. Uh, the excitement over here at the Mexico practice facility is extremely high as we get ready to start training camp today. And I, I'd be remiss not to thank everybody that made it possible from the District of Columbia and the mayor to our medical staff, to all of our facilities, people, everybody. It's such a monumental undertaking what we're trying to do this season in the NBA. And we can't stress enough, safety is the number one issue, the number one thing we're addressing and the number one thing that we're gonna be abiding by every single day. So with that, we hope to have a very safe, healthy camp and an exciting season. I wanna start off today, obviously we made a transaction Wednesday and it's something that uh, definitely changes the, the, the future of this franchise. Um, it's something that I wanna take a minute before we even start to talk about who's coming in. I really wanna dedicate some time to who's going out. Uh, John Wall, one of the greatest players in this franchise's history. And he's somebody that is very dear to me. We have a very outstanding relationship that goes back uh, to when he walked in here. He says he's 195. I think he was probably about a buck 80 when he walked in the doors. He's our number one pick and we watched him grow up. We had so many fantastic memories, so many great times together. And understand, I've said this before, how difficult trades are. Because when you trade somebody, you're trading everything that came with it. And John's family is my family. And I walked the walk with him, his family, Miss Tanya, Miss Sierra, everybody that we've been uh, exposed to over the years. And now with, with Ace and Amir, and just watching John become the man that he is today, it's difficult to say goodbye on an emotional level. That was a very difficult trade for me by far, 27 years in this business. Um, but I wanna remove the emotion from this and explain to you the, the reason that we do things in this basketball world. And my job is to make the Washington Wizards the very best franchise it can be. And we have, every GM in the league actually has a list of players in the NBA. But you know, if this player is ever available, what would it take to get that player? And throughout off season, as we get ready for the draft, we get ready for free agency. I had conversations with every single team in the league. And on Wednesday, an opportunity came up uh, to acquire Russell Westbrook. And he's a player that's been on our list since he came in the NBA, quite frankly. And Russell's resume speaks for itself. It's an opportunity to make the Washington Wizards a better franchise, bring a lot of uh, amazing accomplishments, certainly in leadership qualities to our team, make us a better basketball team. I had to remove the emotion of it. And I think that this was the right thing to do. We made that trade and we move forward. But with that, I, I do want to salute John Wall, being one of the most fantastic people all the exciting assists over the years he's given us out on the floor. Nothing, it just pales in comparison to the assists he's done in the community. This will always be his home. He was tremendous for the Wizards, tremendous for this community, literally keeping the lights on, food on the table for so many people. And his heart is, is, is bigger than the DMV. And we will miss him. We wish him well. And we welcome Russell Westbrook. Thank you, Tommy. Uh, we'll go ahead and start with Chris Miller. Scott, thank you. Tommy and Scott, good morning to you both. Good morning. Um, matching outfits and backdrops. <laughs> no, that, that, that's cool. Teamwork to make the dream work. I knew I should have called coach. Um, I, I want to ask both of you. Obviously, John came to the facility yesterday in a class move to kind of just say goodbye to everyone. Uh, for both of you, can you kind of describe what that was like uh, to see him come in that way differently than he's ever done in his 10 years. And then Scott, I want to ask you specifically about Russell. It's very rare that you reunite with a player where you've had so much success. Can you explain to us what is it about the relationship with you and Russ that excites you the most? Thank you. I, I guess I, let me just start off just saying, you know, met John uh, four years ago uh, when I, took the job here and I grew a lot of respect during that time. Uh, he's a, his intangibles and his skill set and his toughness uh, as a basketball player is just amazing. It's, it's unfortunate and I, I talk about this throughout the years. There's a thousand ama amazing things about the NBA and the worst thing is injuries. It's unfortunate the last couple of years he has not played 
uh, but when he was healthy, he was as good as anybody in the league. And then what he does off the court, uh, just phenomenal. And it's, it's a big thing that what we're about here, uh, but what his, his uh, ability to make a difference in the community is, is pretty incredible. So I you know, had a great conversation um, yesterday, came in, very class move, but that's what I thought he would do. He has a lot of great relationships here. You know, he's been here for 10 years. Uh, we spent some time together. We wished each other luck, much respect for one another. Uh, it's going to be a, a great opportunity for him to do what he's done here, to do it down, uh, down in Houston. I spent a few years there as a player. He's going to enjoy the city, uh, the people, the franchise, and we wish him nothing but the, the best. Real quick, if I could add to that before coach, you got to add to what Chris's second part of the question was. You know, I spoke to John obviously Wednesday night. It was emotional for both of us. Um, like I said, we've, we've been very close for throughout his entire career. But we spoke that night and then obviously he said, I'll see you tomorrow. And we got a chance to, to hug, say goodbye yesterday. And it's really, you know, that the finality of that was, was it was uh, temporary, really, because I know we're going to see each other again. and We can't wait first time he comes to this arena with fans and get that standing ovation that he so much deserves and the welcome back that he deserves. You know, that's what really stinks about this season. It doesn't seem like it might be able to be possible. Uh, we'll, we'll wait till the NBA tells us what we can do fan-wise. But I know how much it meant to everybody in this building. John was here first thing in the morning. Uh, we spent a lot of time just talking getting ready for what's ahead, getting ready for training camp. He's prepared. He's done everything he can to be the best possible health and ready to go for the Rockets. And um, we just can't say enough about how great it was to see him again yesterday. Uh, the second part of Chris's uh, question, just about Russell. Yeah, I have a, a long standing relationship with Russell, a lot of respect. Uh, first, the first time I met Russell was I was an assistant coach for the Seattle Supersonics and we brought him in for a workout. I just probably finished up my playing career five or six years and so on, putting him through a workout. I just said, this kid, is, I've never seen a guy that's so dynamic as, as he uh, showed me that day. But his professionalism, his toughness, his intensity, his leadership, his drive, his determination, um, there's a lot of similarities with Brad. Uh, and on top of all that, he's a pretty good basketball player, but he's going to provide a lot of things that we need. We're starting camp today. We have 13 players in our camp uh, roster that's played three years or less. And so when having those two guys guide those, the rest of the players, uh, that's, that's puts a lot of, uh, puts a lot of ease into my, uh, my thinking, because I know what I have in those two guys and what Russell brings, what Brad brings is really going to help the group and get the group better uh, for the long term. DA. Um, morning to both of you, gentlemen. Um, to to Scott, I'm sure you've thought a long, a long time about how you think uh, Russ and Brad can work together. I wonder if you could expand upon how you think they can complement each other and what each may have to sacrifice for it to work. And to Tommy, just you know, uh, kind of the timeline and when this thing heated up again and um, what got you to yes in, at the end of the day? Well, I, I think um, how they're gonna work together, I think uh, there's gonna be a pretty good, uh, pretty seamless transition of bringing Russell into the group. I've known Brad for four years. Like I said, there's a lot of similarities. These guys are tough. They're, they're, they're team guys, they're determined guys. They have a, a big time drive and their work ethic, their professionalism. Uh, what they're what they're about off the court. There's a lot of there's a lot of things that they remind me uh, myself of. Uh, they remind me of each other. So uh, there's going to be there's going to be some you know some figuring out to do with myself and our staff. Uh, but they're about sacrificing, and we know we want to get to the place that we need to get to. We have to sacrifice. But those two guys have the b great ability to make the three other players that on the court with them much better. And when you when you have that and you have that skill set and that that mindset, uh, it's about winning. And I think they're they both are going to be able to adjust and and understand that it's going to take both of them to maybe some making some sacrifices, but it's going to take the entire 15 man roster to make some sacrifices where we want to get to. 
DA, you're asking about the timeline. You know, again, I go back to pre-draft conversations with every team, go through free agency, and now you're getting ready. We're get uh, the week of training camp. And again, I go back to the responsibility of this organization is to get the very best team out on the floor at all times. And you're always looking to make your team better. So I guess on Wednesday, there was an app, there was a, a call to revisit a, a concept that was thrown out at one time. And you kind of step back, you look at it. Well, if it was this, we would do this deal. And we were able to get to that point um, relatively quickly. And once that became obvious that that's an opportunity that we can get, I, I felt that it's my responsibility for the Wizards, as I said, to get better, to have the opportunity to acquire uh, a player. You know, he's a nine-time All-NBA player. Um, there's 28 people in history that have been an All-NBA player at least nine times. There's four players active in the NBA currently that have been on the All-NBA team at least nine times. LeBron James, Kevin Durant, Chris Paul, and Russell Westbrook. His resume speaks for itself. And when that opportunity came, and I knew it's a value cost proposition, and I look at the value of what Russell could bring to our team versus the cost, it's very difficult. Even then, the cost the talent that it requires to acquire talent is very difficult. To acquire one of the very best point guards in the NBA, you have to give up one of the very best point guards in the NBA. I don't take any of that lightly. That's a decision that I felt put the Wizards in the best possible position to be successful this season. So Wednesday, I don't, DA, honest, I don't know times, dates. I don't know what time we started up. It seemed like it was around 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the afternoon. We were able to get to this place that we needed to be relatively quickly. And I believe it was Wednesday because Scott tells me it was Wednesday. Echoing kind of what Scotty said, how similar these guys are. You know, the, the, the things that John's did in the community here are well documented, but there's so many more things that he did in the community that nobody has any clue about. Whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, Russell was as well. He won the community assistant uh, winner. And when I go through all the accolades that, that John had, I go through the accolades that Russ had, there's no, we don't go back and forth comparing. They're both fantastic people, fantastic players. And I'll tell you one story. The numbers reveal so much about both players, and, and but in particular, we're talking about Russell here. You know, one story that I needed to hear that maybe the public didn't know with Russell. It's just one more example of things that he's done in his career. Well, we were all in Orlando and we left, we were there for 40 days. Uh, Houston was there longer. But when Russell left, I uh, never caught, I, I think the media caught wind of it later, but you know, he left an $8,000 tip for the ladies that cleaned his room. And when I look at what the player is about, some things really speak very loudly to me. And I'm very, um, I had no reservations whatsoever about the player we were acquiring. Russell kind of carries himself in a way that, you know, if you're not on his team, you don't really get to, he doesn't let a lot of people inside if you don't, <laughs> if you're not with him, you know what I'm saying? So over the years, I've always been able to, to wave, say hello to him. But I, one of the few players I know that I don't really truly know deeply in the NBA that we don't have an outstanding relationship outside of the respect that I've always had for his game. But hearing a story like that, I said, that's a wizard. That's something that we really want here. We want high character, high, hard driving players. And he fit that criteria. Very difficult to say goodbye to John, but when I know what we're getting coming in the door, I feel that we are covered on the floor and in the community. Ava? Hey guys, good morning. Um, wanted to ask Tommy kind of a broader question. John defined this franchise for so many people from the outside and I'm wondering if you think, or I guess how bringing Russell in maybe shifts the culture of the franchise or if that alters anything um, from that point of view. And then for Scott, I'm wondering how you think um, Russell, or I guess the effect he might have on all of the younger players you guys have. Um, you know, you've talked so much about how uh, playing with a guy 
guy like John and Brad and being reunited is going to kind of lift all boats. But I wonder how you think he's going to uh, affect all the guys you guys are bringing along. Well, for, for my part, I, I can't, I think it's too early to predict anything. I want to give Russ an opportunity to come in and make an impact on his own pace. I'm not concerned whatsoever about his fit with our players on the floor in the community, but moving forward, it's up to him how, how this goes to go out and play and go do the things. We put everybody in the best position, we believe, to, to go out and have a successful season. We would stay healthy. I think we have good players. I know we have great coaches, staff. We have opportunity to do well, and, and he adds to that. I don't think putting anything on this ahead of time would be unfair to Russell, be unfair to coach. But for me, I think it's going to be a great fit. Uh, Ava, I'm, I'm just on my situation with how he's going to impact uh, the group. Um, Russell's going into his 13th year. And like I said earlier, we have a lot of young players. And some of these players were probably 12, 13, 14 years old when Russell was you know, just starting up and, and making a, a dent in the league with his, with his toughness, his style of play. A lot of, a lot of, a lot of us have never seen it before, uh, before him. So I think he's going to demand, he's going to demand their attention. I know when I was uh, growing up, my favorite player was Julius Irving. I got a chance to play for Philadelphia and I met him for the first time. I'm like, man, this is like my greatest day of my life. And I know playing for that team, I didn't want to disappoint him because I knew he was watching. And the same thing with Russell. He, these guys are going to have a lot of respect for him because they see how hard that he played. They don't, they will see now how hard he works. Uh, you don't just become a good player overnight. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of, uh, a lot of work uh, off season, during the season. It takes a lot of preparation, how you prepare, how you watch film, how you take care of your body, how you get rest and get a good night's sleep, uh, what you put into your body. And Russell is as high of a level of, a, of an athlete I've ever been around. He's so well-rounded and what he does into the community is just, so it's just gonna be a great example and for all of our players. And like I said, like him and Brad have so many similarities. It's gonna be, it's gonna be, uh, Fun to see this all take take place. Thank Fred. you both. Thank you. Fred. Hey guys, uh, more more for Scott, but Tommy, if you happen to have anything to add, obviously, I would I would love to hear your thoughts as well. Um, it, get, getting back to just the on court stuff, like Scott, have you have you guys already started cooking up? ways to um you know work Russell into the offense and and secondly as a follow-up I I know that you guys were were talking about a lot about kind of ways that you could use principles you used in your offense last year the motion stuff um and kind of implement John into that and you know help him off the ball and that kind of stuff Russell and and John have a lot of stylistic overlaps in terms of the way they play are, are there similarities you see there that you think okay we've been doing this with John Wall we could just plug Russ right into it well there's there's definitely a lot of similarities they're they're probably one and one a or one and one b on speed getting in transition finding open shooters and getting to the bucket uh but yeah it's definitely we have some things that in place, um, but we know what we have to get better. We want to still, I mean, we were pretty good last year offensively and we didn't have, you know, we didn't have John nor uh, Russell. So it's going to be offensively. I, I feel we, we know what we need to do. And I think it's going to be pretty good defensively. It's not uh, hidden that we have to improve in there. Uh, John and Brad have the, had in the past, they're really good when before John got his injuries. But with with Russell and and Brad, they're as physical as any backcourt in the league. Uh, they could be as good as any backcourt, two way backcourt in the league. And so I, I I like that. So, but offensively, like I said earlier, it's going to be sacrificing for all of us. And there, in order to we we want to get to to the place that we want to get to, and we think we can get to this year. It's going to be about sacrificing and 
And I know I have two leaders that are willing to do that. It's hard to add anything to that, Fred. I, I, when we look at the on court, obviously, I think uh, Scotty, he mentioned that offensively, I think we're going to score. Defensively, I think Russell will be able to do a great job impacting the ball, kind of get helping us uh, contain dribblers, getting getting guys where they need to be. He can be a bit of a quarterback out there defensively along with, with Bradley. And then we think adding guys like Robin Lopez is only going to help us be able to finish games. Young team, very young team, you know, and, and I tell coach all the time, we got we to stop looking at how old they are. It's, we never use it as an excuse, but we do have 13 guys in training camp right now that have only been in the league three years or less. You know, we got nine guys, 24 and younger. So we have to put some blocks around them, some guardrails to keep everybody together. And I think we're able to do that when you look at Bradley and Russell, you add Is Smith, you add somebody like Robin Lopez and, and some of the vets that we have on this team to help those young guys. You know, peer-to-peer -peer coaching is pretty effective. And don't tell Scotty I said this, but sometimes they don't hear his voice. They hear their player a little bit quicker. And uh, I think that's something that uh, Russell will bring to an existing group of good vets to help these young guys. Yeah, let me just, I can add to that, Tommy, is also, I believe in that. I mean, you have to have players to buy in. There's no question. When I first got into coaching, I ran into Magic Johnson. He always told me, he said, he said if you want to get into coaching, you got to have a team that, that's willing to coach their best player is going to be able to coach that team. And we've had that in the past, and now I know we have it uh, going forward. But, you know, one of the things defensively we struggled, you know, last year was rebounding. We're talking uh, Russell is able to not only do it one time, but three years in a row average a triple-double. And that hasn't been done since Oscar did it, I think, in 65. Um, and he did it three years in a row. So his 10 rebounds and potentially he can get a game is going to help us, you know, even better in transition scoring opportunities. Um. Uh, okay, we'll go to uh, Tim Reynolds. Thank you, Scott. Um, this question's for, for Coach Brooks. Scott, the, anytime you add, you know, generational talent, obviously it's a wonderful thing, but there is an adjustment factor, of course, like you've alluded to a few times already. The fact that you have a long relationship and that there's trust there with Russ between the two of you, I, I'm, how much do you think that's going to accelerate that, that fitting in process, just the fact that, that you guys already know where you stand with one another? Yeah, I mean, it definitely helps. I have a good relationship. The, the thing that I have a good relationship with, not only Russell, with most of the players I've coached. And I say most because it's not the case with all the players. <clears throat> the players will tell you the same thing. You know, I never have a problem with players that play hard. I've never had a problem with players that play for their team. I've never had a problem with players that have high character. And... I have problems when players don't do that. And, and we all should uh, as, as, as fans, as coaches, as teammates, we all should. But Russell never gave me any, any, any reasons to ever have any doubt in his ability. And there was many times early in his career being asked, uh, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? He's not a point guard. He's not this. He's not that. And, and that was all fine. I didn't care what the people were telling me what he's not. I saw and I coach what players do, and he was he was my point guard, and and he he gained not only my trust, his teammates' trust, uh, is his ability to prepare. He he brought it every day. Now in practice, you know, is he is he gonna practice the two and a half hours at full speed and fifth gear like he did his first you know seven years with me? No, but we're not gonna practice those type of hours anymore. Uh, we're much smarter as a as a as a basketball program now. But he he's he's an, he's an incredible player, uh, person, family man. I love his, his wife and three kids, and looking forward to uh, 
uh, being able to bring them back into the to the family and 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 I think everybody's going to really appreciate his determination and his will to prepare is just as high as his will to win. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Chase. Good morning, uh, Tommy, a, a two part question for you. Um, was Bradley Beal kept in the loop throughout this process? And now that you've paired him with Russell Westbrook, what does that do to the expectations for this team? Um, in, in terms of with Bradley Beal, we have conversations. I have conversations with John about our team and what we can do to get better and ways that we can get better. I outline what we're looking for specifically never to the name of a player or anything other than, hey, this is, these are opportunities that may be out there. Um, you know, I think Bradley is really excited to get going this season. He had a great off season. He's healthy, took meticulous care of, some, of himself and is ready to have a great year. I think there's a trust that I understand. He knows I have a job to do. Uh, he's looking, he was looking forward to playing with John. And I, I always have to lay this out that the, we have to do the best job for the Washington Wizards for the future of this franchise, not just today, down the road, whatever it is, and opportunities to get a talent in this league, as we're discussing, are very, very few and far between. This was an opportunity that I felt made us the best possible uh, team for the rest of this season moving forward. And, um, you know, after it would, the deal was consummated, I, I let everybody know this is what we were going to do. But um, what was the second part of your question, Chase? What does having Russell Westbrook now do to the expectations for this team? I feel like with John Wall coming back from an injury, there's probably some built-in patience. Is, is, is it a little bit different now that you've got a guy who you know, just made the All-NBA team? You know, the expectations for us this season, regardless of who's on the roster, is we're going to be a better team. Uh, there's more continuity, just simply having the guys that, that were able to play last year expectations are if we're able to stay healthy, we're going to have more wins this year. Adding Russell certainly uh, impacts our expectations uh, that, that we can hit our stride a little bit quicker. Um, and certainly it's going to take time for him to, to, to fit in with, with Scotty, with the staff that should probably be by second, third practice. Basketball is basketball. Talent knows talent. They know how to work things out. But the expectations for me, Personally, adding Russell to this, yeah, I think we're going to be a better team uh, right away and then certainly in the future. It was going to take John some time to work back in. He missed two years, and we had to build in that patience. You're right about that. But we were expecting to be very good with John. I expect us to be very good with Russell. Matt? Just kind of following up on that, like, you obviously don't make this trade if you don't think the Wizards are better. Just what are some areas that you feel that, you know, that you're getting an upgrade in with Russell here? Well, his resume speaks for itself. You know, we, we need to get better rebounding. He's a great rebounder. You want to make sure that we're moving the ball, sharing the ball. He's, he's one of the lead leaders in assists every year. You want to get to the free throw line. He's proven that he gets to the free throw line. When you get to the free throw line a lot, it, great things happen for you at both ends of the court. Uh, he's 80% career free throw shooter. That tells you he not only gets to the line, he, can, he uh, you know, certainly can, can continue to be productive making free throws. Um, and those areas alone, I think, impact us. And then defensively, again, one more veteran voice out on the floor that can help be a quarterback out there. It's going to help us on the defensive end a great deal. Um, I got to say, fashion-wise, he probably picks our game up quite a bit. And then um, for Scott, just, you know, Russell's obviously known for his fiery like demeanor. How, how do you kind of manage that throughout a season? And uh, do you ever have to tell him to cool it down or uh, how do you kind of handle that intensity? No, I, I think, like I, I said, I appreciate that. I think fans uh, of the game appreciate that. I think the media appreciates that. You want guys that play hard, that play with that intensity that, that, uh, bring it every day, every day in practice, every day, every game. Uh, and it bothers me when you don't do that. It's, 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 it's a lot easier to, to calm a guy down than to tell a guy, hey, your job is to play hard. Uh, don't forget that, you know, we get paid every, every couple of weeks to play hard. 
you should do that automatically. But uh, with Russell, I never have to worry about him not playing hard. That's what he does. Russell has a lot of, um, you know, there's a, there's a story, you know, probably my fourth or fifth year with him. And I would say, Russell, you seem like, like during games or before games, you're like, so angry. What, what, why? He, says, he said, hey, coach, I don't like, um, I don't like 58 point guards in the league. I'm like, okay, I get that. He's not friends with other teams. And, and I, I appreciate that. It's, it's almost a little bit like old school. Uh, all of his teammates love him. Uh, he's, not, he's not into making friends, but he's told me he's, he, he doesn't have, and, and, you know, the other two point guards in the league. I, so I, I came back and said, well, what if there's three per team? And then he was quick. He's like, 80, whatever it is, 87 point guards I don't like in the league. But, you know, he, he brings intensity, and that's something that, to me, is very invaluable, and you can really uh, – you can't teach. That's who you are, and that's who he is. Thank you. Quentin. Good morning, sirs. Uh, I guess this question is more for Scotty. What have you seen as Russell Westbrook's – I guess, main area of growth since coaching him back when you did a few years ago and now with him being a part of the Washington Wizards. What can you say to this, his biggest growth point? Well, a, a couple of things. I think um, his ability to, to not always play in fifth gear. He had, he just would go. And I think as the game, as you grow up into the game and you learn about the game and your teammates. I think he, he picks and chooses his speed and it's powerful. I mean, when he's in transition, it's intimidating. Uh, but I think that that area that he, he's able to see the other nine players as well as anybody in the league at the speed that he is going. And that hasn't always been the case. I mean, even his, I mean, he's been pretty good at it though. Even his rookie year, he averaged 15, five and five, but but I think that's a, an area that I, th I think it's really improved on. Um, and I think uh, there's one, there's definitely one area that I know he hasn't gotten better because I, I looked at some of his, um, my daughter sends it to me all the time, his Instagram. He still is a horrible singer. He can't sing. <laughs> that's one thing he can't do. He's never been able to do that. That is one area he has not improved on. Uh, but uh, just, to, you know, I think the game has slowed down, but it does that for a lot of players. Like you're going to see a, a big difference in Rui. You saw a little bit of a difference in uh, Thomas Bryant. You're going to see a, another jump in that this year with him. But I think uh, that's probably the biggest area that I think we I've seen throughout the years coaching him and throughout the years of coaching against him. Hey, Quentin, I'm going to promise you he's a better singer than Scotty for sure. Oh, I believe it, Tommy. I definitely believe it. Thank you, guys. We're top two. They <laughs> finished worse. Fred, go ahead. Yes, Scott, I just, I want to follow up on something you said before, because, uh, you know, you so, uh, so many times I've heard you say in interviews when people mention your time with Russell early in his development, how nobody thought he was a point guard. And I know you, like, as your first big move as a head coach made him your starting point guard. What specifically did you see then? Because he was so much rawer then, right? What specifically did you see in like 2008 that made you so convinced, no, this guy is a lead ball handler for sure? Well, I mean, it's easy now saying it, but looking back at it, there's a lot of, a lot of tough moments. So there's, there's a lot of teaching moments. I mean, we started uh, three and 29. I didn't think that uh, I didn't think that I was going to see the, the next game at that time. But, I, but I, one thing I, that I noticed that one thing that it never wavered, he's always put the time in. We had practice at 11. He was on the court, dressed, working on his game at 9.15 every day. We would get back from a road trip, land at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, didn't matter on the court 915. So that, that, that in itself, uh, I knew I had somebody, uh, somebody special. And then my job is to 
show and, and teach and, and help grow him to, to really gain the knowledge in that position. That, that position is as tough as they come. Uh, but I, I give him all the credit. He put the time in. He watched the film. I've had a lot of great assistant coaches that really helped him. Uh, I have one now that he spent a, a quite a bit of time with is Robert Pack. Uh, but I, I love the fact that it never wavered. He did not listen to the outside noise. And that's part of being an NBA player. That's part of being a professional is not, not listening, not reading about it, and not letting it affect you. And, you know, it's, it's hard at times. Trust me, it's hard. But I think that's what that's, he, he inspired his teammates with his toughness, his de 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 determination. Uh, but I, I really uh, admired that uh, aspect of his personality and his, his determination to get better. He willed himself every day in practice to, to make that a, a great day. He always focused on winning today's day. And uh, we'll have time for one more question here so coach can go uh, get ready for practice shortly. Chris Miller, uh, go ahead. Thanks, Scott. Scotty, I got two questions for you. The first one is you keep mentioning practice with Russell. Over the last couple of years, you really haven't had to practice the way you want it because you have to manage minutes, you have to manage, um, you know, you know, the you know load management for these guys. But do you feel like that part of Russell will actually help the team win more games? Is because now when you're in the classroom or you're on the court during practice everything that he brings you there will translate into the game. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, unfortunately last year, I mean, it's load management's important and we're going to continue to monitor every player, not just our older players, but we know some players need more time on the court and their bodies can handle it. Uh, but last year was just unfortunate. We had, I mean, we had, Tommy knows that we had so many starting lineups and so many, uh, added players but the injuries were piling up but hopefully knock on wood that is not the case this year but we're gonna we're gonna practice and we're gonna it doesn't necessarily gonna be long practices but they're gonna be a lot of them maybe it's gonna be short uh intense practices but he brings that uh now you know with with um with brad and john they have that they just have that ability to pick up their group uh because that's how they prepare and when you have two guys that talk about it and actually do it um, day in and day out and no excuses that helps groups that helps the group. And, and that's going to be, it's going to be great to see. It's going to be great to coach. Uh, my job is to put it all together and I'm looking forward to today's our first day. I can't wait to get on the court. Can't wait to talk to the players and, and get the players together. Uh, but it's exciting times for all of us right now. And I think, uh, uh, what Russell brings is going to it's going to add to what Brad has brought last season and what we're going to go do do going forward. And Chris, the last question, I'll get you out of here. Go ahead, Tom. No, I'm sorry, Chris. Go ahead. The last question, Scotty, is and this is absolutely no disrespect to any of the other uh, players out there. Is Russell Westbrook right now your best rebounder? And how can that <laughs> help you be a better rebounding team with your point guard diving in there and, and grabbing the ball? And does he have to tell Thomas Bryant to get out of the way if there's a triple double alert? <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, uh, he's definitely going to challenge our bigs because uh, it's amazing how sometimes you don't think that he's going to be able to get the rebound, and sometimes he just goes above and beyond uh, that you even think that you know there's no way he can get it. Uh, but I look at our rebounding as a group. Uh, cause I know the best rebounding teams do it by committee. Uh, but when you have a guy that is capable of an averaging 10 at the, at the point guard spot, that only helps your rebounding. And, but our big is going to do, have to do their jobs. But in order to be a really good team, we all have to do our job. We all have to do the little things that's boxing out. That's hitting the guy that's going to attacking, attacking the, 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 the rebound. But I think he has, He's, I mean, he might be the, he might, if not, I mean, I'm sure he is the best rebounding point guard in NBA history.